Having a high performing team is often the difference between success and failure when you're making your films. Hey everyone, it's Alexi Uzas here from Exile Entertainment. I'm a producer based in Australia and I make these videos to help you on your filmmaking journey. So let's dive in and start talking about the topic this week, which is basically how to build an A-team of high performing, talented collaborators that you can work with for your entire career. So I'm gonna take you through some tactical, practical um, components of it. I'm gonna give you the theoretical side of it as well. And hopefully by the end, you're gonna have a system that allows you to hire people better, fire people better, and then retain um, and develop long-term relationships with people so that you can build on your previous success um, into a new film. So let's dive in. Basically, there's five steps that you need to go through, in my opinion, um, when it comes to building a team. These are the five steps that have um, that I've developed, um, having made just a few films now, and they're the five steps that seem to kind of serve me well every single time I make a film. It has been something that's been very iterative for me, so... Uh, I can definitely say that it's only really now this like eighth film where um, that I've just produced where it feels much more like a solid process, something that's systemized, um, something that we can keep replicating going forward. Up until this point, it's been a lot of trial and error and failing and learning from mistakes and um, you know having relationships blow up or not go the way that I thought they would go. Um, having to fire people on set, that sort of stuff, um, the kind of the ugly side of things um, that you have to go through to learn these lessons to then develop a process, develop a system to get it right. Um, and I'm pleased to say like on this last film that we shot, we had no personality issues, we had no personality um, blow ups on set, um, we didn't have to fire anyone, like it was the most smooth sailing set um, that we've had and um, I'm sure in part it's because of this system that we've set up. So let's take you through what that is. I'm going to give you the overall. I'm going to show you some practical things here on my screen as well um, so that you can start building your team out today. So first thing is to start with a core team. So I've spoken about this on some other videos, but basically a core team is at least two other people. So you and two others, three in total who are as financially and emotionally committed to making the film as you are. So what I'm talking about here is finding two people who are willing to put in the same or more skin in the game that you're willing to put in. And it's really important that you find these two people because if you try and do this on your own, uh, it's very difficult because it is such a difficult task to do, right? To make a feature film, that's so hard to do. To do it on your own, honestly, it would be nearly impossible and I've never, certainly never done it myself. Um, I learned about this core team thing after I'd actually made some films, but then when I found out about it, looking back in hindsight, like I was able to look back on my films and quickly identify that, yeah, there always was, you know, three people, me and two others who were just like, you know, full tilt, committed, um, willing to do anything to make the film. So here's some examples from my films. So um, Plague, my first film, it was two directors, so two co-directors and me. Where's the Sunshine, there was actually four. So director, producer, actor, DP. So three is the minimum, but you can have more than that. Paper Champions, it was three producers. Greenlight, which was a doco that I did, um, it was the director, me, and the two main subjects of the doco. So they were really committed to making that film happen and were instrumental in helping us raise finance um, and, you know, and, and make that film. So that's just to give you an idea of what those different combinations can be. But typically it's like, it's those people who are um, either above the line or are key creatives who are involved in production. So I think that's important as well. Usually what I found is it's more production than like the post-production team. Um, and that's just because really the first thing that you're doing is pushing to get the film into production. So it's typically like writers, producers, directors, actors, DPs, production designers. They're the main ones that I see, but it can absolutely be anyone um, that's involved in the film. Um, they're just the ones that I've found are most common with my films. So best way to find your core team 
is as follows. Number one, if you don't have any like network, any relationship, then what you need to do is go and watch short films by local filmmakers at film festivals. So if you're fortunate enough to have an upcoming film festival, go in person and watch the films um, or check them out on Vimeo. The reason you want to go to the film festivals is because that's going to be that filmmaker's most like current and up-to-date work. Um, if it's like if their film is premiering at that film festival, it's probably not going to be on Vimeo for like another six to twelve months. So it's a really good opportunity for you to see it um, and also see it on the big screen. And so what you want to do is basically find those short films that you really like. So you know you could just go to a session that has is that is just playing short films, watch them all, note the ones that you really like. You know, just make a note of the name um, of the film, maybe the filmmaker's name. Um, you can do that on your phone as well. And then when you get home, you should have a small list of people or films that you liked. And you're looking for, you know, genres that you liked, um, maybe stories that you liked, styles that you liked, um, something that just kind of grabbed you um, about that particular project. So the next thing that you do from there is reach out to that person via email or DM, so social media. And you really just want to tell them how much you enjoyed their work, where you saw it, and then ask them to meet up for a coffee. And then at that coffee, um, I would go in and just let the kind of conversation flow, right? Because what you really want to get out of this conversation is to determine, like, can you imagine talking to this person and hanging out with them um, every day or at least talking to them every day for 12 months? You know, you might not ultimately talk to them every single day, but you're going to talk to them a lot. You're going to be in the same room with them a lot. You're going to be you know, taking risks together. You're going to be you know, forming this partnership. And so it's important that you just get along, that you can have a natural free-flowing conversation. So, you know, talk about your interests, your influences, you know, what's your take on the industry and what is their take on it. Um, just see if you click and you get along with each other. I think that that's just like really important. But then at the end, there should be a purpose to the meeting, right? And that purpose is that if you do get along to see if they're interested in working together. So just ask them that simple question. And then if they say yes, then you know, tell them that you will send them the script or info of whatever project that you're working on and then organize a follow-up call or a catch-up with them once they've had a chance to review everything. And then you know, just ask them if they're in. And if they're in, then that's it. You just kind of go forward from there. Now, on the flip side, the worst way to do this is to just like find someone that you already have a relationship with and then bring them on board because you have a relationship, right? So you just find Joe down the street who's a filmmaker, maybe you went to film school with them and like they want to make a film, you want to make a film and that's it. I wouldn't do it based on that, right? You want to like look into it a bit deeper. Um, you want to still go through this process um, before just jumping into it. And also if someone's already a team member and they want to bring on a team member just because they have a relationship, stop them there, tell them about your process, tell, you know, to say that you'd like to go through that process even with that filmmaker. Can you have a bit of time you know, to check out their work, get to know them, meet up with them in person? Um, and that's going to just allow you, like, it'll just set yourself up or allow you to set yourself up with the best people possible that you get along with the most and who whose work you respect and that's really important. So you wanna make sure it's merit-based and not just relationship-based. So how can you do this in practice? Now, um, this, this process that I'm gonna show you can really apply to any team member. I'm gonna show you why it can also apply to um, heads of department. But if you're ever thinking like, oh, I need an editor for my film or I need to find a composer, like. This process that I'm gonna show you is a process that I always use um, and it will serve you um, very well on your journey. So um, what I would do, so I basically, I live in Melbourne in Australia. So what the first thing I'm gonna do is look at like local film festivals. The two that um, jumped to mind for me initially, uh, Melbourne International Film Festival, that's a big international film festival as the name um, implies. And the second one is the St. Kilda Film Festival, which is a festival specifically focused on short films. So what I would do is basically go to our good friend Google and just type in, so I'm gonna go MIF, Australian Short Films, I'll go even go 2022. So this festival hasn't happened yet for 2022, but they've announced the program. So why go to these festivals? Well, the reason that you're going to these festivals is because 
they've already like pre-qualified these filmmakers. You know that if you're looking at films that have been selected for these festivals, they're already of a certain quality. Someone else has already seen value in them. Um, and so they've kind of, you know, they've already been filtered for you. So you just want to jump on. Um, so here I'm just looking at Australian shorts. So I would be looking for Australian filmmakers. Um, I'd be wanting to find people locally. I'd even be trying to find people who are based in my city um, if I'm planning to make the film here. If you know it's open and I could make it in any state, I might widen it. But basically, I just want to see what films are playing in this section. So here you can see one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, let's just go down and see if there are any others. I mean, you can see they've got other sections down here. Uh, Accelerator, so that looks like homegrown as well. So I could look at that next. Um, but here, I'm just going to say, okay, like here's the first film. I'm going to click on that. I'm going to see who the director is. Um, I'm either going to book a ticket and go and watch like this session um, like I mentioned earlier, or what I would do is check out the filmmaker's name and then you can just grab the name, paste it in here, find their website. Um, obviously you're going to find all their like contact details, Jim, um, I don't know you, so apologies for using you as the example, but congrats on getting into Myth. That's awesome. Hope I can meet you one day. Actually, I'll probably hit you up after I do this video. Um, then, okay, so you can see one film here and another film here. Obviously this first film is playing at MIF, so it's not gonna be available to watch. So I can click on the second one. Looks like it's on Vimeo, open link. And then I can just watch this, sh this short film. And if it's something that speaks to me, if I like the style, if I think that Jim here has um, has some talent, then I'll just go ahead and reach out. And obviously their contact details are gonna be on their website or you can find them on social media. Um, and the other great thing is, yeah, if you're looking on their website, like they might have details of these um, other heads of department. Um, and if there's something that you see in the short film that you like, then you can reach out to them if that's the role that you're looking for. So that's how I would do it. And then I'll just go back, look at the next film and just go through that process over again. So. A big part of building a team is just doing the work, doing the research, and finding those people that you want to work with. You know, the film that I just made, a, short, uh, uh, a film called Time Addicts, um, it was, it's actually a feature version of the short film um, that this filmmaker made. It actually played at St Kilda. Um, I was going through the program, came across it, um, saw it, like watched it, reached out to the filmmaker, and then we met up for a coffee, struck, you know, basically hit it off straight away and then spent two years developing financing and ultimately making that film. So that's really how you do it. It can be as kind of, you know, in a way it is like just an organic, natural way of doing it. You've just got to put a bit of work in at the front end to find the good, you know, good projects, good films. So that's step number one, get that core team sorted. Once you've got the core team sorted, then you can move on to step two. Step two is basically discover your heads of department. So most um, filmmakers focus on those key heads of department roles, DP, production designer. Um, they're like the two that always come to mind. Um, but it's important to note that really you've got to go through this process with every head of department because if you have one area of the film that's not up to the same level of standard as the others, it's gonna drop the whole quality of the film. So for example, like makeup, you might think it's less important than camera, but if you've got bad makeup on the screen, screen it's gonna show, it's gonna ruin the experience for your audience. Doesn't matter how pretty the picture looks, um, it's gonna be a distraction, it's gonna bring down the quality of the film. So what you wanna do with these head of, heads of department is to just go through that same process that I showed you for the core team, but use it for heads of department. So here you're just looking for different things. And of course you can ask people for referrals, right? That's, that's a great way to, to kind of get some, get some leads, get some initial um, ideas. But once you have that name, you again wanna go through this process, right? So you don't just wanna take the referral, which is a relationship, and then make a decision. You wanna take that referral, put it through your process, and then if it matches up, 
then you go from there. And that's great because you also have the referral, right? That's like a, a, an additional um, an additional step. So that's how you do it for heads of department. You go through the same process and you try and leave no stone unturned. So you take your time with it and you get it right. Now, absolutely, the main reason I, I have stuffed this up in the past and I've seen it stuffed up in the past is you're basically just rushing the hiring process. So sometimes there's that time of like, you know, you decide you're going to make the film or maybe the finance lands and then you've got to be in pre-production and you've got to hire really quickly and that's often where the mistakes happen. That's often where you say, oh, I don't need to get, you know, I don't need to go through the process properly. I don't need to meet that person in, um, in person. Um, I don't need to get a referral. Um, that's where you make the mistakes and those mistakes really come back to bite you and they come back to bite you in a way that's much bigger um, and more time consuming than that extra time it would have taken you to get it right. So that's something that's really important that I've learned going through this process of hiring crew, hiring heads of department, finding core team members, just like that time that you could have spent at the start is going to save you so much time later on because the fallout of having to fire someone um, or from someone that's a bad fit and brings a culture down on set or from a partnership that goes wrong you know the emotional and financial drain that that can have like those things can all be um, or you can kind of um, you, you can not predict those things better but you can allow yourself like you can increase the chance of getting that right it's, you know, it's probably never going to be 100% perfect um, because at the end of the day, we're still dealing with humans, um, but I think you're going to have a much better chance of getting it right. So that's um, the process for heads of department. Then what I would do, so you've got your core team, you've got your heads of department. At that point, you want to kind of loosen your group a little bit on the selection process um, and give some hiring authority to your heads of department. And I think there's like two reasons that you want to do this. Um, the first is it empowers those people um, because it gives them some ownership, one of the film, like who's going to be involved in the film, but importantly of their team. Uh, they, um, they're being empowered to build this team and to lead this team. And so giving them that decision-making authority is a really important first step to them feeling empowered. And the second reason is that, um, you know, likely they're going to select people that they've already worked with, that they have a proven relationship with. And that's a good thing, right? Because when you get on set, the more people that have already worked together and hopefully all work together, um, the better because there is always a bit of a teething. Um, there's like some teething that takes time, right? Over that first week or second week. If you've ever made a film or a feature film, you know what that's like, where everyone's just getting to know each other and kind of gelling and working things out. And then usually after that time, it becomes a well-oiled machine. But so basically the more that you can decrease the time that it gets to that point of being a well oiled machine, the better, and you can do that by having people that have worked together before. So what I would do is, you know, so you're gonna loosen your group a bit, but ultimately you still need to make the final decision about who you're gonna hire, who's gonna join the team. So the way that you can do this is you have your heads of department send you a list of say like two, three preferences in order of priority, and then you do the following. One, request their CV. To ensure that they have adequate experience in the same role for the same format. So this one's really important. I've stuffed this, I stuffed this up heaps of times. To be honest, number one, I didn't do for a very long time. Like there was just simple stuff that I was just going through, winging this process, relying on relationships, and yeah, it just got to a point where I realised that like you're just not getting the best outcomes doing it that way. So. This one is like, for example, you know, your boom op should have experience in feature films if you're making feature films. If you're making a short film, they should have experience in short films, not just music videos, right? Because that format is very specific, very particular. The demands of that format are very different to other formats. So you do want to make sure that that person has the experience um, in that format. Next reach out to their references that they list in their CV, minimum of two, reach out via email, ask, them, ask to speak on the phone. Um, and I would recommend, yeah, minimum two, sorry, and if they don't have references for whatever reason on their CV, ask them. 
once you've done those things, um, meet with them in person or via Zoom, totally fine to do it via Zoom. And again, you're doing that thing that we did at the first, you know, in the core team um, stage, uh, which is basically like, just get to know the person. You know, can you, again, imagine working with them every single day for a long period of time? Um, do you get along? Do you just, you know, intuitively, do you get a good vibe from that person? Um, so that's really important to do. And then if all those things check out, send them an offer, lock them in really quickly. Step four, fire quickly or fire fast. So if you do end up with someone that isn't the right fit, you have to fire them and you have to fire them fast. And the reason that you want to do that is because someone that isn't the right fit, if they're underperforming, if they're not competent, if they're bringing down the culture, um, if they're not meeting deadlines, they're just bring they're just a weight that is bringing down the performance of the of the people involved in the film, and the only way to get rid of them is to cut them loose. And so, um, you know, it might sound a, a bit harsh or a bit hard, but it's you know, as a filmmaker, you always need to have the films like the kind of vision of the film. Um, or the film's best interest in mind. That's the best way to put it. You know, it's not your best interest. It's not, if you're a producer, it's not the director's best interest. It's the film's best interest. And so when you're making these hard decisions, that's why you're doing it because it's in the best interest of the film. And so the best way to determine if someone's the right fit early, um, and this is really good for like core team members um, because you're going to be working with them the longest, the most, and so the best way that you can work this out is give them a task, give them a deadline, and just see if they execute. And if they don't execute, it's a red flag. It's a very, very early red flag. And I would be watching that very closely. I'd probably, you know, set maybe another task, another deadline. If it's not met, you know, you've got to start thinking about moving on, unfortunately, like that quickly. Um, because if people aren't hitting those marks early on, like, the chances are it's just going to get worse and worse. So that's a really good way to just put people to the test and just see if they're up for it. And then um, if it's clear someone isn't the right fit during pre-production or production, so if you're already in that process, um, give them a couple warnings, but make sure, you're, make sure you do give them those warnings and don't, you know, if something doesn't get done that should have got done, and you know it, don't shy away from giving that warning. Like you should give that warning um, because if it happens again and it happens again, you want to have had those um, initial discussions, initial warnings to then justify why you are letting them go. So that's, um, that's what I would recommend. And again, even if it means firing someone during production, you have to do it if the alternative is to have on, someone on set that's bringing down the whole film. And, you know, what I've found with those decisions is that the crew sometimes, you know, they might be surprised or shocked initially, but what I've found is that if the decision makes sense, um, they're on board with it and they move on very quickly and just, you know, and you get back to work and then ultimately everyone realizes very quickly that that was the right decision. Um, you know, where you maybe don't want to do this is if you don't have enough justification for letting someone go. So you should never fire someone just because like they don't agree with you um, or because, uh, yeah, maybe like you personally don't get along with them. That's absolutely not a reason to fire someone. You know, it should only be because they're not performing in that role. And of course, you know, you've got to make sure that you're compliant with any legal um, requirements or any laws that relate to employment um, so make sure that you're across that as well this is not legal advice just a disclaimer there um, step five is to play long-term games with long-term people so that's a quote that I got from um, Naval Ravikant if you don't know who he is um, he's a investor um, kind of philosopher if you'd call him that these days modern philosopher um, but yeah you should check him out you should check out this quote in particular because um, basically what it means is that you know relationships like interest can compound over time so the more that you work with someone 
the more trust is developed, the more loyalty is developed, the easier it becomes to work with that person and the more seamless it becomes to do business with that person. And so ultimately, you know, you end up in a position where you, you trust each other so much that, you know, you can do things in a um, much less rigid, structured um, manner. And so that just makes your life a lot easier. So you want to find people that you can play these long-term games with. And filmmaking is a career, in my view, that's played over decades. It's not played over years. You know, if you just get into the game for five years and get out, like, you're going to get nowhere. You know, it is something that takes years and years to just to break into, really. Um, and then from there, you know, it's really, it's, you know, decades that you're playing this game over. And the more, yeah, I kind of said this, but the more that you can play this long-term game with those loyal, trustworthy, talented team members, the more that you're going to get out of it because it's going to make your life easier. You're going to make better products. Um, you're going to constantly improve the culture of that team like that's going to get better it's going to get higher performing and ultimately the results will just compound over time and um, if you want to look at some careers that have played over decades and how compounding has worked for them um, I was having a chat with my brother today and he let me know that Ridley Scott at the moment has like I don't even know how many films in development. Like, it's a crazy amount. And then if you look at Scorsese, he's got a bunch of films. Um, I think maybe even Coppola has a bunch of films. So, like, you look at these filmmakers who are in their 80s now, like late 70s and 80s, and their slate is probably the biggest that it's ever been. And that's just a result of that compounding that's, like, now really, really working for all of them. Um, and... You know, the reason that they can do that is they have these relationships that they've re developed over decades that allows them now to handle this huge amount of output. So when you find a talented team member, you should work with them again and again and again and again. Right? That really is the key to it. You know, or if you find a good, if you're a producer, you find a great director. If you're a director, you find a great producer. Um, if you're a writer, you find a great director. Like whatever those relationships are, and you might have... You know, you might have multiple of those relationships, especially if you're a producer. There will be many directors that you're working with and crew that you're working with. And so you might not be able to work with all of them at once, but the key is that you should keep working with them, right? You should find ways to work on new projects together to develop that relationship and to get better as a team. All right, so that's it for the video. Those are my five steps to building an A-team um, that will hopefully serve you for your entire career. Um, if you liked the video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, share it with your friends. And if you'd like to explore working with me or my team to help you finance and produce your films, um, head to the link either in the description below um, or on our YouTube channel. You'll be able to set up a time to speak with us and we'll uh, basically have a chat, work out if it's a good fit. If it's a good fit, um, there's a few different ways that we work with filmmakers. We do one-on-one -on -one coaching, we do training programs, we do EPing and producing. So that's it for the video, and we'll see you on the next one.